Aloha, everyone. I'm so glad that you're joining us for the finale session. Uh, today is actually the end of our six-week series, our high spa, high five interviews with uh, an incredible uh, collection of experts and industry professionals that have given us tools, tips, and techniques for successfully reopening our businesses uh, post-COVID pandemic. Um, so uh, I hope that you've found, if you've joined us on some previous sessions, that these have been very useful for you. And if you've not had an opportunity to review any of our previous sessions, I'm happy to report that we have those on our High Spa website. Um, I think everybody knows me by now. I'm Sean Hallam. I'm the Director of Education. I'm going to actually just go around really quickly um, to let you know uh, a couple of the other people who are here with us today. Cecilia, who you're going to you've all know already, I promise, because she's our, our essentially the mayor of all things spa in the world of, of Hawaii, um, but our beautiful uh, high spa board president, and she actually conducted the interview you're going to see today. We've got Daryl Lehman, our treasurer, here. Um, and we also have one of our advisory board members, Sharon Ogawa, uh, with us as well. And um, you may have met Amanda um, last week. Amanda joined us uh, last week as our official uh, high spa secretary. So she's going to be serving our organization and all of you with excellent communication uh, tools and, and resources in the weeks going forward. And we're just adding her bio to our website. So check that out uh, next week. Um, so um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to queue up our last session, which, it, which was really incredible. And thank you so much to Cecilia, who put this together. Um, she ha has a, a wonderful uh, fr friend and industry colleague who is going to provide us with some insight as to what has happened with his businesses on the mainland. Um, Rodney Cutler, um, who is a, you may already know him. He's a celebrity stylist but also works in the world of fashion as well. He owns a, a number of businesses and has had an incredible journey so far in getting his businesses reopened. So I'm going to go ahead and cue that interview in just a moment. It was pre-recorded yesterday. As you can imagine with the time differences between us and the mainland, sometimes uh, recording these videos in advance is a better opportunity for us. <clears throat> but I assure you that if you have any questions uh, for Rodney, we can get those to Rodney through Cecilia, and we'll, um, we'll uh, either engage you individually by email, or we can actually announce in a future um, session, you know, sort of follow up to that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and cue this up, and we'll get this party started. One second. Okay, now you all should be able to see my screen, and specifically um, this interview, which I will Aloha, Hi Spa friends. Super excited today. We continue to do the Hi Spa Navigating Together series post pandemic, the high five top questions. And today we have a great artist and uh, an expert in beauty and fashion, Mr. Rodney Cutler. So, Rodney, why don't you tell us uh, what you're doing, what's going on, and aloha. Oh, aloha. I should say thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. I, I wish I was doing it in person in Hawaii, but hey, I, I'm originally from Australia. Uh, I built my uh, career doing education, uh, salon work, and then we're moving into fashion. So I started Cutler, the brand, uh, early 2000s or late 98, I think it was. And then we, um, and then we, our goal was to really sort of uh, become an authority in fashion. It was interesting because at the time, celebrities were starting to grace the covers of magazines and the supermodel thing was ending. And uh, so when we started our company, as we all know, you, know you, you need to get PR, you need to have media attention. It was very difficult to compete in New York. And all the beauty editors would all, the first question I'd ask is, well, what celebrities do you, do you do? At that point, we didn't really do any. So I said, I'm gonna do something that I'm passionate about. And that was to become an authority in fashion. And the reason was that it's really not about who we do, it's about what we do. And every year we would have two new creative stories and it would force us to reinvent ourselves. So, uh, oh my God, 20 years later, uh, we do 25, 30 shows a season. I think we've done a great job in becoming an authority. We've got great um, relationships with designers. It's also been a, a very a fantastic tool for our staff 
to sort of push themselves creatively and it's become a reason to come and work at Cutler. Uh, so it's been exciting and it's really had a, an interesting bounce back to the salon where now that beauty editors do come to us and they want to hear our voice, creative voice, and it's trickled back into the salon. Our, our guests are curious about what we're doing. They want to know what's fashionable. And, and it's our job to then translate that into wearable looks from what we create on the runway to what we do in the salon through haircutting style and colour. So it's been a, you know, it's been an up and down journey, but generally it's been fantastic. We've got four salons today. We've got uh, well over 100 hairdressers. Uh, and it's been, it's amazing. I love it. I can't wait to get back to work. Oh, so talking about that, when is New York opening? So they, I, we are phase two. We, we thought we were going to open June 22nd. Uh, but now I think our mayor has pushed it back a week or two. We don't know, but we're 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 getting everything aligned. It's been a, it's been an amazing journey. I remember the first few weeks in March. You know, it didn't seem real, and we we I mean we we do 170 services on a Thursday and a Friday, and wow. even more on a Saturday. So it's you know with the biggest complaints we had in January was just it was chaotic and crazy. So I was like, oh, my God, this can't be happening. And when the NBA shut down, I think it was on the Wednesday, uh, uh, second week of March or third week of March, um, it sort of suddenly struck and I was like, oh, this is going to happen. That was the hardest time for me was I had staff members saying, um, please don't shut. And then I had other members saying, this is ir irresponsible, we need to close. And that was, people have asked me, what was the toughest time? It was like not knowing. And, and once we were mandated, we, we shut before the mandate, but once it was mandated, it made it a little bit easier, like decisions made, you know, we put health before profit, and um, and then we sort of went down to shutdown. Then it was that fanatic week or two, like, what are we going to do? And then what are we going to do with my time and start a new business and, and online education? And, and I was really proud of our staff about how positive they have been. I was like, we're just going to be positive. We're not going to get on these... You know, in social media, we've seen the best and the worst of people. So I was like, we're going to stay positive. I'm not going to get caught down that rabbit hole. And I'm really proud of the way we've handled ourselves and the staff. And uh, we've been in uh, communication quite a lot. And uh, so now we're ready. I think we're ready to come back. Oh, good, good, good. So that is a perfect segue to the questions, the high five questions that we have. And... So how will the new normal is going to change the way that you do business now? Look, I think when you're in your business, I, I feel like you produce and you gather. When you're gathering information or education, sometimes you step away from producing. If you're just producing all the time, just going to work and, and doing your clients, you, you're never stepping away and thinking about how we can do it better. So we have used this time, and I personally use this time as a time to say, this is out of my control. So this is my gathering time to rethink, rethink about who I am as a person, as a, as an art, as a hairdresser, and also as a company. So as I said, our biggest complaints in January are where I, I can't hear my client, it's too loud, there's nowhere to sit, people are waiting. So we now have to, we have no choice, we have 50% capacity going back. So it's going to be a different experience. Cutler has always been this very high fashion, crazy phonetic energy. It's not for everybody, but you felt like you were a part of something that was very cool. So culturally, we're going to change just by the experience that we offer. So I've said in our, all of our Zoom meetings, thank God for Zoom, right? <laughs> all of our Zoom meetings, is that let's take the chance because the, the challenge that we had where it's too busy and crazy, now we can sort of rethink the experience. Culturally, it will feel different. So we're now doing shift work. We're going to go from two to, sorry, excuse me, eight till two, three till nine. So we're going to have 50% of the clients in the space at one time. That will be perceived differently. And I think it will be an opportunity for us to sort of um, recalibrate and get the things right with our business. So hair was always fantastic, but sometimes the service, I know nobody does service better than you. Um, but uh, that was the thing where we were lacking. So it's a real opportunity to rethink that. Good, good, good. Uh, well, talking about service, you know, Hawaii is so famous for the Aloha spirit. 
And of course, uh, around the world, everybody has incredible customer service. It's just uh, with different names. Mm -hmm. So would you, if you're having masks and if you're having uh, plastic shears and all that, do you think some of that customer service is not going to feel genuine? You can't see the person smiling or you still think we can do a good customer service? I, I think we absolutely can. And, and and I remember going to, um, you know, um, it was the Four Seasons in a way many, many years ago. And, and I, I remember the, the, the attention of detail and, and the communication. And, and just the, the, the time where people take the time to really connect with you and ask questions. And so I think for us, it's going to, uh, uh, it's going to um, require the setup. When the, it's going to start when we really book the appointment, even setting up the comfort level. Of like of the experience and setting the tone, setting the expectation, even with our staff coming back, I'm creating much more flexibility. And we're pretty flexible anyway about the comfort, making sure when people come back to work, they're comfortable. When the guest calls, here's what's going to happen. We're going to do a temperature check. We're going to uh, here's what the, the procedure is. There's no one in the waiting room. So I think if we set the expectation up front, I think we'll be totally fine. I have had more, in this time, I've had more conversations with my family. I've had more conversations with hairdressers that I respect and like that I don't normally have the time to talk to and more conversations um, with clients either through text. So there is, a, there is a desire and I think as an operator, and whether, whether you're a, a, a spa expert or esthetician or a hairdresser, that having that connection with your guests is going to be absolutely critical because... They're dying to come back, and there's, and I think that opportunity. And I'm doing it all the time on text, like, "Hey, coming back soon. How are you doing? Um, what, what can I do with my hair in between to make make me get through it?" So there is the opportunity, but it will look a little different. I think our front desk is going to play a huge role in setting that up. You know, in in the beginning. Uh, so, quick question: Being the expert, not only in beauty and fashion, but you also own your own business. Uh, you own your four salons. Uh, and salons uh, were ahead of the game on sanitation compared to other areas, in my opinion, yep. you know, because there are so many different uh, worries about diseases and, you know, salons have always been extra caution with the, uh, you know, the extra gear. Uh, but at the same time, we have heard that once salons open, they are packed. People are going insane because they really want to get those grooming processes back. Do you foresee that you are going to be super busy or you're going to try to control it by only taking 50% of business? Yeah, so unfortunately, you know, the landlords have mortgages, we have rent, we have to generate similar amount of revenue. So we just need, I think the key to this is flexibility. And just if you are agile as a company and flexible, you can make it work. And that's why we're doing it with our shift work. So I think that's absolutely critical. Um, with the, and, and what we've done is that let's assume that in our salon, you, you're touched by many people. The person gives you the gown, somebody washes your hair, somebody cuts your hair, somebody, the same person who washes your hair might blow dry your hair. So we're going we're gonna to minimize the amount of people who touch you. So when you go to one guest, so what we will do, we will say, okay, if I'm going to cut your hair, or let's say you're having colour. If you're having colour, the next guest comes in, their assistant, we have assistants, they may do the glaze or toner. Once they're handed over, the colours cannot come over and touch the client without sterilising and disinfecting again. So now, we may have a guest who says, I want one person to touch me. That's it. So then they're going to book out that time for two hours rather than one hour. So that's the way we're going to do it. I think the big thing is we've had fortunate some of the southern states have already started. So there's some great learnings from our friends in the industry. Uh, you know, some people weren't blow drying the first week. Right, right. Uh, one guest at a time. Uh, no one else touching. All these little things are good learnings. I think we're, we're going to learn a lot within the first few days. But I think the key is being agile, being flexible and adjusting. The other thing is, too, over four weeks, as phase three, phase four comes back, we're going to have 75% capacity, I would assume, and then 100% eventually. 
but that's the way we're going to do it. We're going to try and avoid the amount of people who, who touch you. you know? And obviously, plexi in between, um, separation of stations. We're taking out every second chair to allow the six feet um, social distancing and so forth. Yeah, because some of your salons are quite big. We have 34 chairs in one salon. Wow. So you're actually going to be taking some of those chairs out? We're gonna, well, we're, gonna, we're actually going to keep them in and use them as barriers and separation. Also, people could then sort of process there. But we're going to have all these dividers and so forth. But we're going to have 17 operators in the space at once. And, and we'll do 17 in from, from 8 till 2 and then 3 till 9. And then we'll have an hour break that we can sort of plan, sterilize and get reset. And are you opening later or are you always open until 9 p.m.? We're opening later. And, and I had a great conversation with our educational leaders yesterday. So that was another thing. You know, one of the attractions of working for us is we have a lot of education. So the thought was to use mannequin heads. And I was like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. So we were going we to create an education on a Monday when it's really quiet. And then we're like, that's fantastic. So, so I'm, I'm going to pitch that to the assistants who say, if we do educate, because normally the educator gets in their hands in the hair, try this, goes to the next student. Well, we can't. We, if we can't touch multiple people. If we have mannequin heads and we have gloves on, then this could be uh, a solution. So oh, nice. I, 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 think, I think the biggest thing I've learned through this moment, mm. it's okay to say I don't know as a leader. And I think, you know, I've been on some advisory boards and some great stuff and some great Zoom meetings, some, um, some seminars and, and everybody sometimes comes out with like, you know, here's how we're going to do it. I'm, I'm like, I don't know. And I've said that in all of our staff meetings. You know, the first thing you say, I'm going to feel comfortable with your permission, for me to say, I don't know. Because if I don't know, it's okay. Now, the way I've looked at it is, there, is there's policy, which is set by the government and I trust they have our best intentions. Um, and, you know, on a state level, you know, we have Governor Cuomo. Then we have, um, uh, and then we have our, our, our procedure. And that varies to every salon, every company, every culture. And you have to look at that. And then we have common sense. And, and I think if we put those three things in that order, like what do we have to do that's adapted to our environment um, within each salon, which would not even each salon, but even each operator, is going to perceive this very differently and then let's get in together common sense and if we do that i think we can come up with a solution but i always say the first thing is to say with permission i'm going to tell you when i don't know don't well, be freaked out by that and these are such a unique times and um, the whole world is experiencing this at the same time so a lot of i don't know is definitely for all of us yeah. Um, so, uh, did you have to change, I'm assuming, are you doing like a pre-orientation or a warm welcome for your staff so they all understand what the big goal is? Uh, you bring in them all one day earlier so you can kind of review all your new policies. What are your thoughts? Yeah, we've been in contact, not bombardment, but with, I, I'm an open book, so I've allowed people to call me whenever they want. Um, so we've had a lot. In fact, yesterday, I've been making about over 100 calls in the last couple of days. What, what we've done, we've had a, some, some structural emails go out just about what's happening. We're actually sending another one out this week just about what we know. And again, we thought we were going to start on the 22nd. That's going to change. One of the biggest things we're going to do is we're going to have a staff headache because we don't look our best. My son cut my hair the other week, so he did a good job, but he's not the hairdresser. So we're, we're actually going to have a staff hair day, which I think is really oh, important. Oh, I love that. So we're all going to come in, yeah. and we're going to get a little pampering. And mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have two days of that. Then we're having we're having Zoom meetings. Just uh, we, we had a week of Zoom meetings a few weeks ago just to be like, where's everybody's, you know, just checking everybody's, uh, temperature in terms of how they feel about coming back. Uh, then we've had individual phone calls. Then we're, what, at some point we've got to just gather all the information or, and then say, okay, here's our, here's our policies and our procedure. Uh, and we're going to do that again. And then we're going to have a staff day. And we'll get our head. What better way to practice the new procedures with yourselves? Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. I think we have to wear 
a mask and a shield as opposed to some of the southern states that are just wearing masks. So, you know, each, each state is uh, different and, you know. So you already bought all that equipment and you have it ready to go, huh? Yeah, I, so we, 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 we're going to provide a shield for everybody and that will be their shield. They have to uh, sanitize it after um, uh, each service. Then they have their mask for the day. They'll get a new mask every day. And then we'll have masks for the staff. Um, I would assume, oh, sorry for the clients, I would assume they will already Bring come in with masks. Yeah. Then we'll have gowns, we'll have disposable gowns, we'll have real gowns, uh, the cutler gowns. That's what and, I was going to uh, ask you. You're going to be bringing a lot of gowns because, you know, in most of the salons, you reuse uh, yep. some of these things. And uh, are you buying extra to just keep washing it or you have a few disposable ones? Yeah, we'll, we'll have both because some people may say I don't want one that's been washed, so disposable they might not want one and, I, and that's okay as well you know um, and we'll do a temperature check at the door if somebody wants to walk in what mm -hmm. we'll do is that we'll say what do you look for an appointment just wait here we'll go in we'll check if it's available and then we'll go yeah, I'm not worried about you some people are saying I don't want to do new guests I don't why I don't understand why a new guest would be Different. more concerning yeah no but you know we just go through the same procedure so you are uh, taking temperatures to your yep. employees and to your guests? Yep, non-contact temperatures. And in New York, every two weeks, it's mandated that you have to be tested for COVID-19. Oh, no way. They already started that. Yeah, so every two weeks. So I'm assuming we have to do it to start work, and then we have to do it every two weeks to make sure that you're not positive. Wow. So uh, what advice do you have for our members as you're planning to reopen your business? You know, I, I think as business owners or, uh, or even working with co-works, even if you're not, it's, it's, it's a collaboration. I think if you're just going and bulldoze it, uh, there's pushback. There's, you know, we, we, what I've just said is I've gathered all the information. Just be open. Listen to your staff. Listen to your co-workers. There'll be certain people who, who are concerned. And you may think that's excessive, but that's where they're at. And I think we just have to engage it. What we've said is if you're not comfortable with our procedure, totally fine. Everybody's guaranteed their job back. But if they if they want to come back two weeks later or they want to have a different shift or a different work in a different way, or say, here's what we're doing and, um, uh, and we'll support you whether you're comfortable with that. We'll make any adjustments we can. But at, at the end of the day, we've got... A lot of people are satisfied. So I think it's really about collaboration. I've never been that kind of owner where it's you know, my way or the highway anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and it works for us. And, and you know, embrace it. I, there is, from what I've heard from all the salons that have opened, they are busier than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. Even with the 50% capacity, they're doing bigger revenues than they ever have. The clients are smiling. There's a couple who might put challenge, like I don't want to wear a mask. Well, I'm sorry, you can't have your head up today. So I just think it's about flexibility and engage, engaging with your guests um, and then engaging with your co-workers or, or whether they're your staff or your co-workers. Great, great, great. And uh, I think you've kind of mentioned a little bit, but I still want to ask you, what is the biggest lesson that you have learned during this time? Uh, nothing's guaranteed. You know, you, you, you just can't take things for granted. Yeah. I, I look, I, I'm, I'm a pretty positive person. I'm very grateful for what, what we've built collectively. It's taken 20 years uh, it, with, with everybody's input. And I, I just think, you know, you miss those little things. We all do, right? We miss that little, like, oh, he's got a coffee store or my morning run or whatever it was, you know? And um, so it, it, there's no guarantee to this. I, I, I did not see this coming. I, I, if you'd said to me we would be shut for three months, I'd think I've lost my whole business, you know, but we haven't. And, and you fight and you, you, you dig in and, and, uh, and you keep going, you know, in your own way, whether it's keeping your business open, closing it, doing business in a different way, you keep going. So it's taught me, I mean, it's, I already had that persistence, but it, you can get through these things. Uh, you've got to have a plan. You've got to be flexible, um, but don't take it for granted because... True. We're pretty lucky what we do, right? It's so true. 
And the fifth question is, what have you been doing to stay mentally, emotionally, and physically well during this time? So what we did was uh, I asked all the staff. So, uh, you know, it's funny, I said to one of, our, one of my partners, I said, he was cooking one night. I said, can you make a video of you cooking? And he said, yeah. He said, well, I'm going to do my wife's colour. I said, great. I said, I want you to, and he's not a colourist. So he puts a colour on, he's cooking to me. And I said, I just want you to make a video of uh, uh, cooking and do it while your wife's hair colour was up. So then all the staff, I just said, hey, let's just start making great little videos. So it was, you know, cutler and, cutler and uh, cooking, cutler and, and creating. So somebody made a bird cage, and I'm, I'm not good. I can't cook. So I was like, I'm going to go for a long run. So I went and ran. Uh, I think it was 30, 32 miles that day, and I made a little video. So we that's what we did on our social media, was to sort of make it more fun, not as much pressure about, like, you know, we've got to put out these creative messages and keep it going. I was like, let's... The other thing which I thought was interesting is that a lot of the staff I spoke to were like, I've never taken any time off. And I was like, enjoy it. Enjoy your time at home. Hopefully this is not going to happen again, so you're not going to get this opportunity. So, so yes, you can create a plan, but, but if it's out of your control, enjoy it. So I was really, you know, what I do, I like to run. So I've been running a lot, riding. And I'm training for an Ironman in September. So I was like, it's about time I lost a few pounds. And uh, I think we all <laughs> I'm training. <laughs> uh, so you, you have two boys, right? How old are they? They have just turned 17. Oh, my goodness. It's yes. been a long time. I, I, I think I heard today, someone said, they don't have to, because they were going to take their driver's license. And I heard that you don't have to now. If you turn 17, because it's not available. So I, 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 that's when I get out here, I'll be like, guys, check and see. You might actually just get your license, which just scares me that they'll be allowed on the road without actually going through a test. Oh, no way, automatically? <laughs> that's what I heard. I, that's what I heard this morning, but I could be wrong. I'll, I'll check. <laughs> Don't take my word for that. They grow fast. And uh, are you still working with uh, being an ambassador for Redkin? I am. We've been, uh, my God, it's been 20 years. It's, oh, is it 20 years? Close to, yeah. It's been fantastic. You started, um, you were 12. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been a great ride. They've just been, you know, for me, partnerships with, um, product manufacturers, it, 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 it's, they're all coming in all different shapes and sizes. What was great was that they really supported our creative initiatives. You know, I love their product. I love their education platform and it's just been fantastic. And it's just, it's, you know, we wouldn't be where we, we are without them. And that's what you look for when you, you know, we, we always do creative things and they've supported it. And it's been a fantastic journey partnering with at Fashion Week and, and also in the salon world. So it's been awesome. So this is kind of my last question, but it is more of uh, so when you have multi locations, because uh, I had the pleasure to work for Aveda many, many moons ago, and having multi locations is not very easy. You know, you're trying to keep your brand uh, and standards going consistent between all the uh, properties. How do you do it? So it's a great question. You know, when you look at, you know, like a Starbucks that, you, you know, I, for me, I go there because I know what I'm going to get, no matter where I am. So there's, there's that part where you're like, you look at a brand, the brand equity, and it gives you a certain expectation on what you're going to get. The flip side of that is that should every location be like every other location in your organization? Yes, no. So we, when we opened in Miami, the problem was that we tried to bring New York to Miami. Mm. Um, it worked, but it, it didn't work as well as it could have. So now that we've opened in Brooklyn, we've really said, even the start, even the, the hairdresser, because remember at the end of the day, you've got the brand and then you've got the hairdresser and the true relationship, once they get in the chair between the hairdresser, I don't care about what the brand says, it's who's cutting my hair and do we connect? Um, do we connect um, on a personal level and also, um, from a creative perspective, they give me a heck of a one. So we have now, we celebrate the individuality of each store. They look different slightly to represent and to connect with the neighborhood, but also fit into our umbrella. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you Mr. Entrepreneur, you know, how to build a thousand hair salons, but that's just the way we have done. So it works for us. So we want to 
be individual, but also have some brand standards and also an expectation. We do hope that they see the name and they go, oh, well, that's quality, but it's different. It's a different experience, different hairdresser who's doing the hair on Fifth Avenue, um, 58th Street, where we are now, to Brooklyn. And I think that's important because at the end of the day, it's one guest having their hair done by a hairdresser. No, you're definitely right. I think there are some brands like you mentioned, a Starbucks or a McDonald's, where it doesn't matter if it is in China or it is in the other side of the world, you expect that a drink or a burger to be identical. And uh, however, I know high-end brands, hotels used to have a heck of a time when people get up, they didn't know where they were. They want to experience the culture. They want to make sure that they're part of it. And if you cookie cutter a resort everywhere, uh, so they start customizing and inviting the host culture to come in. And still they have the customer service brand, you know, and uh, but it was unique, you know, it was different in each location. Well, and that's what's amazing about the Four Seasons, right? Where they, you know, there's a certain level of quality, but they're all different experiences. But I'm your worst nightmare because I know you're such a great educator and trainer of standards. Could you imagine for our company, you'd be like, oh my God, you've all over the place. So I get that <laughs> I'm not helping your cause with the, the standardizing the training, but I still think you can have both. I think, well, I, think I think for, um, for all of us that they run spas and at the same time we always run salons, um, I think the salons are really hard for us because uh, uh, when you put a uniform to a very <clears throat> creative person and you load them up with all these rules and standards, is uh, it's almost like you're chopping their wings, you know, and you're trying to make sure you don't have a steel magnolia uh salon in your hotel high-end hotel but at the same time you want to make sure that this individual feel creative and it doesn't show up with uh rhinestones in their eyelashes and right. you know tattoos all over their face <laughs> yeah no it's it's tricky and you know i remember we had the opportunity we were looking for a new space on fifth avenue and at a, an old famous hotel it was a sherry neverland and and, and we were right down to the wire and we were, the, there were I think there was 18 entrepreneurs that went for it. We got down to two and the president said, you just got to start, too many of your staff have tattoos. <laughs> and I was like, hmm. And I really wanted it. And they didn't go with us. And then I was like, it was probably a blessing in disguise. <laughs> but it was interesting how people perceive things differently. And, and you know, I could have to put on sleeves, long sleeves, and blah, blah, blah. But I was like, ultimately, I think being, you've got to be true to what you're passionate about and you believe in. And yeah. you've got to adjust and, and you can't just have it your own way all the time. But it's probably a blessing. I think it's soft. <laughs> right now it's softening up. I think people yes. are way more open. You know, I see a lot of these strict policies where you don't have to have a beer. Now you can have a beer where... You can have some more jewelry or some, you know, some strange colors of hair where before we were very, very strict about things like that. Well, and in, and in our head, you know, I think having, you know, 50 people who look like me and dress like me and do hair like me would be a pretty boring company, right? Like, so, you, you know, it's all about next generation do yeah. it better. And, and so I, 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 the one thing about, Cutlery is I've always, always, I want individuality. I've always, I want, I want people to build their own career path, you know, and, um, and have that flexibility, but also be themselves creatively because, you know, we don't need 50 of me. That's right. <laughs> well, we do, we do. What about Fashion Week? When do you think that will start again? Well, February was tough, right? There was, first of all, there was restrictions. So, you know, we, we, there's yeah, a lot of yeah, it did happen, but it it was it was it was a battle. You know, we 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 did half of the shows we normally we, financially people were already concerned, um, and there was restrictions. You know, we we actually did a lot of design this past few seasons from China, so there was already those restrictions coming in, and uh, we had one Chinese designer, Taurei Wang, who, who I love working with. Her team couldn't come because they they were coming from China. She 
was still, she lives in, in uh, the UK. So she actually came and did have to build a team. Um, the show was absolutely beautiful. We did this beautiful French twist. It was spectacular. Clothes were always amazing. We weren't sure how it went. So September, I have no idea. I, I, I don't know. Oh, well, we'll see. Maybe, maybe there's an opportunity to reset that too, because over the last few years, we were at Bryant Park, and then we went to Lincoln Centre, and then we went downtown, and now it's scattered all over. We've been at Spring Studios the last few years. I think it's probably a chance to re reinvent it anyway. Why not? Why, Why not? not? Yeah. Well, this, that was the last question. Thank you so very much for... Um, you know, participating in our high spa association. Uh, we're very excited uh, with all our members every week. We've been in touch with them because most of us are in furlough, including myself. And we're definitely enjoying to stay home a little bit and kind of do the things that you were saying. Our companies are doing a great job staying connected with us, but they also don't know what's going on. You know, so we are dealing with a lot of quarantines and a lot of safety um, precautions. We're getting ready to open little by little. So they are saying that it's okay now to open uh, hair salons and restaurants. So You're in phase two? Are you, are you phases yet? Yeah, so it's very excited. A couple of days ago, I got my first cocktail outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I went to Paella. I don't know if you've been in Maui or not. I have not been in Maui. I know you say you were at the Big Island. The Big Island, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. So the next, the next interview has to be on the island, right? Okay. <laughs> One the island. Sounds like a plan. So thank you so very much. And it's so nice to see you. It's been a while since the uh, three, four years ago, I think, yeah. when we were in that wellness uh, panel. That's right. That was for um, well, it was Esquire and County Country in Arizona, right? It's a Billmore. So I truly awesome. enjoyed uh, uh, getting to know you that day. Yeah. Well, stay safe, and uh, it's great. And I, I uh, good luck with the the reopening. We'll, we'll as a community, the beauty community. I think uh, we'll all get through it. Well, thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you so much, Cecilia, for that fantastic uh, interview. I mean, you had so much curiosity that you brought to that interview, and, and I know that our members are, are very grateful for all that they could learn from Rodney. Um, before I turn it over to Amanda, uh, and I think Amanda is going to want to facilitate some questions with the group, I wanted to just remind everyone that we have, hang on, if I can get this going right here on my side. Uh, all of these interviews are now uploaded to our website. So um, make sure that you go to hawaiispaassociation.com and on the education page, you will find all of these fantastic interviews uploaded here for your review. Um, in addition, if you have not already seen our reopening guidance uh, overview, uh, please take the time to do that. Uh, so I'm done and I'm gonna turn it over to Amanda. Aloha, everyone. That was such a great interview, Cecilia, and it was really nice to hear from Rodney Cutler uh, and all of his answers to our high five questions. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Please put them on the, the chat. I don't see any questions coming in at the moment, but uh, please put them up there. We can answer any questions. I, uh, I thought it was really uh, an interesting idea about his uh, pampering for his team uh, and his makeover day for his own team members before they get started again. And I was thinking that would be a great idea that everyone does need a little bit of a refresh before we get started. But I loved that particular point that he made. Um, although he made a lot of good points and it was really nice to hear about how um, they're doing, you know, in other markets and, and sharing some of those ideas with us. So any questions? You know, I'd, I'd just like to, again, thank Cecilia and uh, Rodney for uh, the great interview. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, um, it was interesting to see that although we are all mainly spa based, uh, it was interesting to see so many similarities between our spas and his salons. And, um, you know, just his philosophy on going forward, you know, the notes that 
I kind of, that will stick in my mind a little bit are the, you know, when he said safety before profit was something that is really commendable. Um, you can see throughout the interview that he remains positive, you know, he's such a positive guy. And I think that we as leaders in our own spas need to reflect that, be positive, be the leaders where people are going to be heading back with uncertainty, step up and be positive and reassure them, make sure that all the, you know, all the new measures that we're introducing are there, of course, but reinforce and encourage everybody is going to be very, very important as we head forward. Um, you know, I think he also said uh, opportunity to rethink offerings. And so often we sometimes feel, I personally feel that our menu has not really progressed as, uh, it's stagnated in effect. You know, we've been doing massage, facials, body treatments, hair and nails for 15, 20 years. And so here's maybe an opportunity of conditions that are now forced on us to maybe change a little bit and be, get out of the box, get out of the envelope, push, push things into developing the industry further um, based on our current conditions. Um, you know, many other things, uh, be flexible. He was saying that, uh, you know, of course, stick to your principles, but be very flexible with this changing environment all the time. So, um, and I, I just loved his carefree attitude about don't take life so seriously. It was really nice to see that, uh, you know, with all this heaviness that we're dealing with, that there's still a light and we, you know, you got to enjoy life. And so I really enjoyed the interview and thank uh, Cecilia for setting that up with, uh, with Rodney. You're welcome. But no, it was, it was a great, uh, um, he's a great human being. And I think that was one of my favorite things about the flexibility that he has with his staff and what better way to practice uh, all the new procedures by having a spa day with the team, you know? So um, I love That's his energy. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I think we're pretty much done today, unless somebody has any more questions. Uh, one of the main reasons that I wanted to interview somebody that owns salons is because they are our stepchild. You know, most of us have salons, but our bread and butter is really uh, the spa. And um, I think it's time to change a little bit how we looked at our salons and having an expert uh, in the beauty industry, realizing that our salons need to be also connected to fashion. We all need to follow what the fashion it, you know what is going on in the fashion industry in Europe, in the U.S., in New York, in Miami, and kind of be trendy and see what the latest, latest. Are you doing eyelashes? Are you doing uh, tinting? What are you doing that is the latest, latest? So um, it's nice to have an expert in our team. Thank you. <laughs> Great. So uh, in, in closing, let's turn it over to Daryl. I know that um, you have a, a call uh, for, for the team here, for all of our members, whether you're here live or reviewing this in the future, I, I think we'd like to hear from you. So can you tell us how that happens, Daryl? Well, thank you, Sean. It's uh, again, thank you for the interview. It was really nice. And, you know, I was just, just before we started recording, I was just mentioning to everybody that um, it's, we set a goal of six lectures. We've now come to the end having successfully completed the uh, High Spa High Five series of six. Uh, it was a goal which we completed. And so uh, with the success of that and running on the curtail, um, coattails of that, we'd like to hear your ideas. If you have any, please feel free to send them in about any other aspects of the industry or things that you'd like us to discuss, whether it's a Zoom call or activities or put our initiative behind, uh, behind any particular efforts. We'd love to hear from you. Info at hawaiispa.com would uh, get us to, uh, we'd love to hear from you. A um, little bit of housekeeping notes that uh, if you are not receiving communications directly from us, please make sure that we have your, both your work and particularly now your personal 
contact information, personal email addresses, cell phone numbers, whether you would like texts or as um, emails. But, um, you know, we are able to, we definitely would like to communicate with you and hear uh, from you. Um, and, you know, just like to uh, say, let's keep in touch. And it won't be long before you'll be hearing from us about the next uh, series of activities that the Hawaii Spartiation is going to be doing. And it's only as successful as the strength of our members. So, you know, you're, we're an association. We would like to hear from you. And please feel free to reach out, communicate, because we rely on you. And uh, hopefully we can give some support back to you in turn. So thank you again. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, uh, Amanda and Jennifer in her absence. And of course, the real thank you goes to all of you who've taken your time out of your day to listen to the uh, presentation. A big mahalo out to you all. So be well, be safe, and thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.